Hello everyone, this is Wade from High Tech Legion, and in this video we're going to be looking at the user interface and how to set up the Roseville T600N dual band router. Um, when you first hook it up to your system by plugging the Ethernet cable into one of the LAN ports and power on the router, what you're going to want to do is open up any browser, in this case we're using Internet Explorer, and type in 192.168.0.1 into the address bar. What you'll get is a login box and the default password is admin. The username is admin and password is admin. They actually say that in the response that the system gets back from the router right here. So let's go ahead and log in. And what you get is the status page for the Roseville T600N. So on this page, we've got all the system information with the model and mode, uptime, date, hardware version, serial number, application version, any WAN settings, uh, so your internet settings, and your LAN settings, which is your local network and then as well as your wireless LAN settings for both the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz settings. On the left hand side you've got your selections for what types of uh, what system what the system is capable of. What mo most people are going to want to do is run through the wizard to set up their internet. Um, pretty self-explanatory. You click the wizard and then click next and it will automatically detect what type of internet uh, you have and provide you with the proper boxes to uh, put the information necessary in. Under internet you have your WAN settings and you can renew which means it'll actually shut it off and try to pull a new IP address from your ISP and each one of these has all the different types of um, network connections under it, internet connections under it, as well as PPTP and L2TP, which are usually used for VPNs. Wireless 2.4G is your 2.4 gigahertz standard 2.4 gigahertz um, wireless network. In here, you can enable or disable the radio, change the mode from AP to WDS. WDS is used for actually connecting two routers together to try to make a bridge. Um, most, not all routers support that though, so you have, would have to make sure you have two of the same. And then your band, so you can choose whether you want B devices, G devices, BG devices, N devices, or BGN devices. If you have all N compatible devices, it's recommended that you choose just the 802.11n. Um, that unfortunately, that'll only allow N devices to connect. So if you have somebody come in who doesn't have an N capable device, they won't be able to use your network without changing that. However, that gives you the optimal speed um, because it's not trying to run backwards compatibility for the other um, older standards. Your SSID or network name. In this case, I've put HTL test in here and auto channel enable to disable. What this does is uh, sets it so that um, the router will actually pick the best channel at the time. If it's disabled you get a channel drop down box and you can pick which channel you want the system to be on. If it's enabled you have a drop down box that uh, is setting affects how often it checks to decide which channel to put itself on. Under advanced, you have um, the advanced settings for the wireless network. Mostly you're going to want to leave these completely alone as the defaults are effective, um, but you have your transfer power, so if you wanted to suck your network in a little bit and not have it spread out so much, most people don't want to change that, but you have the option of turning the transmit power for the radio down here. That's probably the only setting that you may want to change um, in here. Under security, you have exactly that, the security settings for the network. Um, you would, whether the SSID is broadcast or visible, you, usually you want to leave that to enabled because having it disabled 
doesn't really offer you any extra security even though you, people can't see what it is and um, it can cause some issues with some older um, machines your encryption don't bother using WEP use WPA pre-shared key and you might as well use the newest standard because almost every device supports WPA2 encryption nowadays passphrase or hex Passphrase means you can enter something that you can remember into it. Hex means that it has to be um, a set of characters between 0 and 9, and then A, C, D, E, F um, are the only valid characters that can be used. In this case, I chose passphrase, and I put in test HTL1234 just to test this router out. Um, and what that'll do is give you something that you can actually remember for when you have new devices or set up uh, other people coming in into your house. You got filtering for wireless access control and WPS is the push button setup on this. Um, right now it's enabled so when you push the button you can actually connect to it using a device that supports WPS but um, I would recommend you actually disable this because it does create a security flaw and if you're using a password um, that you can remember you don't really need that quick uh, convenience it's just as easy to type in the, the password. Under the client table it shows you who's connected to the, the router at the time and under policies it uh, gives you the option to disable certain features so the WAN connection gives you internet access and communication between clients wireless clients here and then also communication between wireless clients and wired clients so say you wanted them um, just to have internet access and that was it you would set the WAN connection to enable and the other two to disable and then they wouldn't be able to access any of the other computers on the network Wireless 5G is exactly the same as the 2.4G, except that you have the 5 gigahertz band instead of the 2.4 gigahertz band, and you don't have the auto channel here. Under firewall, you can enable or disable the firewall. Obviously, it's recommended to keep this enabled because that'll protect your, your network and your systems from outside intrusion. This does support um, denial of service blocking as well as packet filtering and stateful packet inspection. You also have URL blocking um, under the URL filter section. You can put in a URL you don't want anybody to be able to access or a keyword even and any site with that keyword on it would be blocked. IP filtering table allows you to set it so that um, only certain the IP addresses are denied or allowed internet access or um, access to certain services. Mac filter uses the hardware address of the um, machine. The DOS tab has the enable or disable of the denial of service attacks uh, feature and for DMZ you can put an IP address into the DMZ and enable it what that does is actually puts it outside the firewall so if you were running a web server or wanted something exposed to the internet without exposing the rest of your system you can put it in a DMZ. Advanced settings mostly for VPNs again so you would um, enable or disable these as necessary and under the advanced tab you have the network address translute translation you're going to want that on because that gives you the ability to use your um, internet address on multiple devices and then you have the hardware accelerator which is defaulted to disable um, as well as port mapping port forwarding port triggering and a list of many other application services universal plug and play quality of service and routing. With the QoS or quality of service um, what this will do is actually allow you to set a limit on how many megabytes can be used for the 
download speed and upload speed. So if you have limited bandwidth, uh, you can set this, and it'll the router will try to um, allocate that bandwidth better for different processes on your on your network. Under tools, you have the option to change the default password, which I highly recommend to you change it from admin to something uh, different and remote management. What this does is allow you to enable an outside a internet address so you can actually get into the router from off site. Most people don't need to do that. And time under time, you can set the time or use a network time server um, to set the uh, time on the router. DDNS is dynamic DNS, so you can use um, dyndns.org to set up a host name and be able to connect into your system from outside of your network using that. The diagnosis tab here allows you to ping a internet address and see if uh, the results and under firmware you can browse and upload new firmware from the site under backup you can restore the system to the factory default back up the settings to a machine and also restore the settings using the browse button and uploading those saved settings back to the uh, to the router the reset section allows you to do a reboot of the router without losing any of your settings so if it stops responding you can go in here and and reboot the system without unplugging it necessarily um, of course you can pull the power from it and do that the same way if you can't get into the console here. This has been an overview of the software interface for the Rosewill T600 and wire, uh, dual band router. I hope you enjoyed this overview. For the full review, please see www.hitechlegion.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Take care.